What up, y'all? It's your boy Kev to the own stager sin. I got my setup. My setup is set up. I'm, I'm I got my camera elevated. I wish y'all could see what it takes to, to work this. I got my laptop elevated and I got a secondary device so I could see the comments and see them. Boom, boom, boom. I do got to look down, but I don't have to reach all the way up there. I got a whole thing going, guys. I got a whole command center. You know what I'm saying? So it's a great day uh, to talk anime. Before we get into this, I wanted to, I just want to chat real quick. I'm, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, I want, I want y'all opinion. Here's my fear. Because I'm so into anime, I be wanting to talk about it a lot. My fear is that people are gonna be like, "Dang, Kel, all you do is talk about anime now." Even though I won't do anything less, I'm just like. I will, I will spread the episodes out so that I could so I could talk more about this to y'all, right? So I just wanted to make sure. I don't know. I guess what I'm saying is, I feel like um, I never want people to be like he's forgetting about us. But I'll also be like, bro, just just let me post what I want to post, and I want y'all to watch what you want to watch. I feel like that's all I can really do because I know I'm not doing no less of anything, but yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point, Ben. Let me show that to the world. No, not everyone likes anime. Not everyone likes reality TV. We talk about them dog on reality TV shows like nobody's business. At the same time, I feel, I feel like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is my YouTube. This is my Patreon. This is my life. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? So I can offer it, and then y'all could rock with what you rock with, and you could not what you don't. You know what I'm saying? There's so many people. It don't got to be a lot of us. If you ain't watching Death Note, you ain't got to. You know what I'm saying? And I'll be putting the stuff out to the people. I thought about, honestly, um, not flooding the patreon with uh anime stuff and putting it more out to the world i thought about that and then obviously still putting it in patreon so you can be a part of it because the biggest anime community for me is uh out there in twitter so i don't know i guess i'm just talking but uh I just, I just really enjoy right now. And I don't even know how long that will last. But. See, Mia said, I've been following you ever since your first social media comedy tour. And I've been an anime fan the whole time. Just means I watch more content. So we'll just do it how we want to do it. All right. With that, let's begin. We're talking episode three through six. I want to make this announcement probably every time. Please, no spoilers, no light spoilers, right? I only talk, if you've watched more than this, only talk about up to this, the episode we're talking about. I already seen some people like, yeah, I finished, man. I didn't like what happened at the end. Don't even say that. I don't want, my, I don't want nothing tainted beyond uh what i'm hearing you know what i'm saying so so no light spoilers like well you like this wait till episode 12 when it, like i just want to be like <gasps> no heavy spoilers no medium spoilers no light spoilers because if that happens then i'm just going to record these videos alone with no people and then i'll just post them afterwards and then i won't read the comments but i feel like in patreon we could come to an understanding and uh you know that's the hope you know what i'm saying so uh agreed agreed i got my notes here let's start episode three l is on his zoom okay he does he deduced that light is a student 
just from the times that he's been getting the deaths and the heart attacks and this and that, he like, I feel like this dude is a student or this killer is a student. He didn't name no gender. I feel like that person's a student because the killing patterns are basically after school, prime study hours, not on the weekends. They probably out living their life. So, I mean, L was in his bag for a good amount of time. Right. So then they got they kind of have like a moral dilemma in the in the show. The people like, you know, violent crime is down you know, because people don't want to get killed. So are we doing the right thing? Are we doing the wrong thing? What's going on? You know what I'm saying? So it was funny because lights at home studying and his sister comes in and is like, can you help me with these quadratic equations? And he's like, for sure. No problem. I love quadratic equa equations and murder. Those are my two favorite things. And I'm good at both. And come to find out, y'all, that this is a huge <gasps> moment for me. Go, okay. okay. Light Daddy come home for the first time in the show. Now, this whole time, I thought Light, you know what I'm saying, his mama was a single mom. And you know what I'm saying? I get that. I was raised by a single mom for some years till my mom met my, my dad. They got married. They did some sweet sex. I get it. I wasn't even judging her. I didn't even think about who the daddy was at all. Till that daddy come home. That doggone daddy come home. And next thing you know, the daddy is the chief of police who we've been introduced to all the while. He just been at work so much. We didn't know who his family was. He come home. For dinner, and I said, Oh Lord. And them anime shows, boy, they're gonna make it make sense. They're gonna put them characters in some tough, tough positions. Okay. So I'm like, bruh, what 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 you mean? Yo, daddy, the chief of police, what kind of police officer are you? Yo, the murderer, the call is coming from inside the house. Your son is a serial killer. And you over here watching him eat Captain Crunch and you don't suspect nary a thing? What kind of father are you? What kind of police? And he seemed to be good police, as they say in the wire. But he ain't that good. He ain't looked in that room and found that notebook, ain't caught it on fire or nothing. I said, oh, Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord. You mean to tell me your daddy police? So light hacking into the mainframe, just like Dexter. And then, like, look, for this episode, up until this point, L had Light back into a corner. I said, dang, you know, I thought it was going to be back and forth, but Light hadn't been throwing no punches. I'm like, fight back. And also, I just want to make a quick note, okay? Um, L, I needed him to get some furniture. That man had his computer on the floor, sir. Head down to Ikea. I know they got him in Japan. I've seen a YouTube video about it. At minimum, get you an air mattress and, and put your computer up on a, on a desk. I'm talking about computer on the ground, a desktop computer on the ground. Are you poor, L? Are you poor? You don't even have to. If you don't got Ikea money... You could go to Ross, TJ Maxx, get you something to put the computer on. You cannot have no desktop on the ground and, and expect people to take you seriously as a man of, of uh, great detective skills. And I know you got to be a little crazy, but bruh, you got to get it off the ground. Your, your, your hardwood floor is hot. You got the mainframe on the ground. This is this is crazy. This man sat on the ground and said, I got to figure this out. Okay. <laughs> so now Light has Light has abandoned his um main objective for the moment of killing criminals so that he can become a god that's loved, feared, and revered. To I just want to kill L. I'll use murder as a means of finding you out, killing you, but I just want to kill you. Is that too much to ask? I just want to kill you and take you away from life. And then I can get back to killing in my main goal at, at hand. 
right? And it was funny because in this episode, Ryuk was like, let me just pull you aside. And I don't even be tripping low-key. I want to let you know something real quick because you ain't said it, and I just want to make sure I say it. I ain't on your side. I ain't on his side. I'm on the side of death. I just like death. That's my thing. I ain't going to tell you when you're right. I ain't going to tell you when you're wrong. I'm going to tell you what I want to tell you when I want to tell it to you. But other than that, I ain't got to tell you nothing. Show ain't. Show won't. Doing what I want to and don't do what I don't want to. Now, anything you got a problem with, have a problem with it because it can't kill me. And only you can see me unless somebody touches the death notes. So what's up? Hmm? All right. That's what I thought. Right. And 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 right after that, he tells he tells uh he tells light, by the way. Shinigami eyes are different than your eyes. With my eyes, I can see your lifespan the day you die. Shinigami eyes. I got good Shinigami LASIK. Okay, anytime you once you get Shinigami late uh powers. They head you down to the Shinigami optometrist. They laser you in. And then they put you the numbers above your head so I can see what you got. I can tell when you're going to die right now. But I ain't going to tell it to you. Because what's the fun in that? Hand me that apple right there. Love me a Granny Smith. I ain't going to tell you nothing. Right? So then... He's like, nah, and this is when he really sounded like the devil a little bit to me. He said, um, <laughs> look, I'm not, I'm not good at math. He said, now, if a person's supposed to die at 60 and I kill him at 40, I could take that 20 and add it to my lifespan. Okay. Now, that's how I basically become immortal. Because y'all can't kill me. And I basically take them unused years, like singular wireless, roll them back, hand it to myself. What you going to do about it? Right? Boom. Watch that. And then let me tell you what else. I done told you about the Shinigami LASIK, where you can see what I see. Do you see what I see? I could give you my eyes, at least the power of my eyes, Shinigami LASIK. All it's going to cost you is half your life. I said, hold up. Half your life, he said, and, and, and I ain't going to tell you how long you're going to live. So if you was going to live to be 80, I'm going to give you 40. But I'm going to give you the Shinigami eyes. Oh, and also, you get to see their name and the years. So you can kill somebody just by looking at them. Can't hide from you, which would be valuable if he saw L. Because, you know, L could go by that initial. Although Light said no, I'm wondering, don't spoil it, if he gets into a pinch. And L gonna be on him. I wonder if he'll be like, all right, I'm gonna have to trade my, I'm gonna have to trade my lifespan. Because if I don't, I don't know how else I'm gonna kill L. That's my guess. That's what I'm guessing, but I don't know. I could be wrong. Don't spoil it. But they planted that seed, and although he said no, I highly doubt that it'd be no forever. That's what I do doubt. Okay, now watch this. Moving into episode four, Light says, nah, I don't want the LASIK. If it gave me more life, shout out to DJ Khaled, I'll do it. But less life, <laughs> this boy said, I want to be a god for a long time, bro. If you give me, if I take life, uh, I take your eyes and I get less life, then I'm going, I'm going to be a god for less time. Make that make sense. And he was like, all right, I just had to tell you. Also, this was creeping me out. You got a stalker. And I'm not telling you this because I'm your boy. I'm only telling you this because I'm following you and he following me. And I don't like being followed. So, uh, so um, what's your boy's name? Light. Looking out the window. First of all, he has the world's worst stalker. I mean, the world's worst stalker on earth. He looked out the window, dude, like, I see you. He like. Do you see me? Yes. Do you? So he's. (laughs) 
Oh my god. <laughs> Maybe it just seemed easy to me because I'm just like, bro, I'm just <laughs> you walking hard, you walking loud. You terrible at this. All right. So he got to find out who this man is. All right. And also a key thing that happened in this episode is uh, Light killed a whole bunch of people to see how the Death Note works. Right. So he's like he told somebody to die in front of the Eiffel Tower that was in prison. He couldn't do it. He told somebody to do something un- or to write something that they didn't believe. The person didn't write it. They just died of a heart attack. But he told some people to like to draw like a devil worship sign. And he did it. Write a note. Do it. You know what I'm saying? Do this. And they did it. So what he found was he can manipulate the people's death, but only if it's plausible and or believable. So if you could possibly do that in real life, then he could manipulate you to do it. If you believe what he wants you to write, you will write it. But if you don't believe and confess with your heart and believe with your mind, eh, then it ain't going to work. Bet that up. All right. So he was like, um, all right, bet. I need to know that. And that was that was smart. So then he gets he got this 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 dude who um, had been killing people. He was like petty criminal killing people and stuff like that. So he got him, tricked him to get on a bus. He tricked the FBI agent who named Ray Penda. Okay. He's like, who is you, man? And he was like, boy, I'm FBI. He said, I'm supposed to know you ain't working with the hostage. Because you know what I'm saying? They run a two-man operation. I was like, this is great. This is a great point. Like, he flips over his badge and he's like, my name Ray Pendle. Work for the FBI. And Light's like, okay. Now I got your name, man. I got your face. I could kill you when I need to. And I'm like, Light, you got to stop killing people too much, bro. You killing a lot. You you need to go play play some basketball. Your whole recreational time is murder. It can't just be murder. But it's murder. Yeah, I agree with you, Latoya. Let me tell you what. Oh, Ray Ray was the world's worst worst FBI agent. I said, boy, you is you're not good. You flipping your badge over in the middle of a hostage crisis? You luckily the dude wasn't paying attention good. So watch this. Uh, he tricked. He he dropped a note, and the and the criminal dude picked it up. So he immediately starts to see the Shinigami. That's my boy Ryuk. And he starts freaking out. And Ryuk is like, "Okay, Ryuk is funny. I don't know if he's intended to be funny to me or to to the audience, but he just be saying funny stuff to me. He's like, okay, light. That was good. Now you can see me." Uh, now he could see me and I can't leave until he dies. And I want to pause real quick and say, this is one thing I do really enjoy about uh, <laughs> Brennan. Get out of here. Brennan. I made fun of Brennan for liking anime years ago. I'm a different person. Now. I don't even remember that person anymore. So I can't apologize for who I used to be. Because I'm different now. And this current me would never say what old me said. But I'm not looking in the past. That was 2021. You want me to apologize for the person I was then? I don't even know that guy. Was his name even Kevin Allen Fredericks? Probably, probably not. I don't know. Man. Greg just texted me. I ordered some Postmates. And I had left the address at the office because I ordered it for breakfast there. And then I didn't. Okay, Brennan, I apologize. But it's just going to be on Patreon. But you can't say I didn't apologize. All right. But so when uh, the criminal, I can't remember his name, he touches the death note, he sees Ryu. And here's what I like about anime. They don't necessarily build the world all in the pilot a lot of shows build the world all in the pilot anime shows from my brief brief experience and i can only speak to the shows that i watch now with watch so far which is attack on titan and this and then blue eye samurai which they don't say is anime but it's anime to me 
they will they will build the world as you need the information. They don't give it to you all in one lump sum. They'd be like, all right, you need to know this, so I'm going to tell you this. And then that thing immediately becomes important, necessary. They don't bring something in and then not do it. Low key, if I'm being honest, Attack on Titan was, was building. They had a whole nother world that wasn't introduced until like the last season, I believe. And correct me if I'm wrong, did the Marlins, they didn't come in until season four, three or four. It wasn't, it definitely wasn't one and two. Was it three or four, y'all? It was four? It was four. Okay. All right, it was four. So the thing about it that trips me out is I'm like, when I tried to guess that Zeke's dad was the was Captain Irvin's uh, father, or, or Zeke's Zeke's Titan was Captain Irvin's father, I was basing that information on the world as it was currently built. I never seen another show that in episode season four, they're like, oh, also the world is humongous. This is just one small, small island in the world. Here's all this other stuff that was going on. But I like that. Um, I like that this is how they do it. All right. So just want to say that. All right. Then we go back to episode five. So here's where it gets dicey. And this was key too. Ray's telling his baby mom about the investigation, right? And his baby mom is smarter than your average bear. She's talking this and talking that. And she's like, um, you know, this, that, and all that type of stuff. Uh, and Ray's like, girl, now nah, I told you. And he was very misogynistic, if you ask me. She should not never been with Ray if he thought of her like that. He said, now, nah, I want you to be a, a kept woman. I don't need you to be an FBI agent, being smart, and telling me what to do. You, you, you left the agency so you could, so you could cook. Now, I want the pork chop sandwich that you promised me. Get in that kitchen, woman. He basically said that. And she's like, you right, you right. I mean, it doesn't matter that I'm basically Agatha Christie. I'm going to go back in the kitchen. Okay? I'm just going to go back in the kitchen. And he's like, you know what I'm saying? But I don't. I ain't trying to say you go in the kitchen, but you know what I'm saying? Make me some cornbread. And I'm like, Ray, why are you treating her this way? She's smarter than you. You is the world's worst FBI agent. You don't realize you're talking to Kidder right in his face. Then showed him your, you don't know nothing about nothing. And I th I thought she would, because she had picked up that, it, first of all, she picked up that the bus uh, murder wasn't a coincidence. And Ray was like, hush, back in the kitchen, you. She's like, all right, all right. And low key, she was on to you and you wasn't on to her. And guess what? Doggone Kidder tricked him. Getting on the train. I mean, I'm talking about the most elaborate plan. Got a hand behind his back. I ain't got no... As a matter of fact, he didn't even fake that he had a gun. He said, I'm going to kill that guy right there. Boom. That guy. Huh. But he was a sex offender. He deserved it. Then he had Ray write all the names down of the FBI agent that was on the case. Put it in the envelope. This whole planned out thing. He had him write it all down. Deliver the envelopes to people. And low key, he framed them all. He framed ray for the murder of all the fbi agents in japan and i thought this was key because this was the first time well the second time that he killed people that were not criminals he killed lindell taylor who he thought was l but now the 12 fbi agents they not even um uh guilty of anything they just doing their job so it don't take nothing but episode five and you're going to find out that your boy light is dark again and he'll do whatever it takes. He done killed the whole FBI. They go back to the police department and uh, light daddy. Chief oblivious. Is like. Um, oh, yeah. Lindell Taylor was a criminal. That's right. My bad, Jeremy. You're right. Let me highlight you because you was correct. He was a criminal. L didn't know. I mean, uh, Light didn't know that, but he technically was. 
but the FBI agents, it's it's there's there's no way to hide that that you you was killing people that was completely innocent, and that goes to show that he'll kill whatever needs to be killed. He ain't got to hide it or nothing like that. Like, nothing like that there. All right. So the chief get back to the office and he's like, hey man, listen. If y'all want to quit, I understand. Go on ahead and quit because this is crazy. People, people, people dying every day. He finding out people who had, while they at work, did all this, all that. People dying every day, B. And I'm like, I'm thinking everybody's going to be like, nah, man, I'm, I'm with it. No, I was wrong. Everybody quit. And if I worked there, I'd been like, thank you, Jesus, because I had got me a job at Carl's Jr. Because although the pension and the pay is good, I would rather make the $7 burger or $6 burger, whatever is Carl's Jr. is famous for, because I don't want to die for this. It's not that important to me. This job is not worth my life. They end up with like eight people, seven, eight people. And they like, all right, now, L, enough. If we're going to work together, then we're going to work together. If we not, then we not. And two more people were like, nigga, I'm not waiting for no L. I quit as well. And I said, oh, God, dog, this is crazy. <laughs> and then they quit. And the next episode, episode six, low into the behold, you meet L. Now, L's like, I move around hotels every two or three days. You won't catch me. I want L, at least in this hotel room, he got his computer off the floor. L, big earthy. This man, they, the camera showed L's toes I don't know how many times. They was like, look at this man toes. He ain't had a sock on in ages. The hair is crazy. The hair go back. L has under eyeliner on. He's, he's, uh, what's the word? Pale. He's pale. And you know what? I'm going to agree with you here. You know, big, he, L is musty. He just seems musty. Stinky feet. L look crazy. Emo. He probably <laughs> What does this mean? What is otaku? What that mean? L is sour. Hilarious. What otaku mean? Is that pronounced correctly? Otaku? I know he musty, but most geniuses are. I'll be using that as my own joke. Thank you, CC. You know L shop at Spencer's. Has to stop by. Gotta stop by, Spencer's. You know L spell like... <laughs> I Googled it and says a young person who sets the computers in particular aspects of popular culture to the detriment of the social... Oh, is that what otaku is? Otaku is someone who stays home and doesn't interact with the outside world. Y'all know Japanese? Anime nerd? So Brennan is an otaku. He probably gone now. Do otaku mean musty, though? You have a Japanese degree, Mia? You know Japanese like that, that girl? That's crazy. Hmm. Interesting. He shops at Goodwill and not for the good stuff. It's a common phrase among anime nerds. Whoa. Lo and behold, Brennan is one of us. That's funny. Dang. That's a good one, Jeff. I ain't gonna hold you. Whew. Solid joke there. All right. I'm highlighting you. Now, here's what I want to know. Because in this episode, Light tears a page out of the Death Note. And he didn't even say why. My question is this. How many pages in the Death Note? How many? Because it seems 
infinite. He writing in it. He tearing pages out. It's the death note replenishing pages. The notebook didn't seem that big. He was filling pages up. Is it mythical? Is it magical? Did he keep just writing, 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 writing? And then it don't, then nothing ever gonna happen? Because he he tearing pages out left and right. Did he get it from Walmart, Office Depot, Office Max? And I get it for the show, but I'm like, bruh. So, yeah. And here's the other part that's going crazy about this show. I said, man, this just, you just can't never sit down, at least so far. Light go to the police office, police department to give some his dad some clothes, leave him at his office at the door. And, and Light had just told, L was just saying, I'm sure he made a mistake. Ryuk was just saying, you can't make a mistake. And Light was just saying, I shouldn't make a mistake. I shouldn't overlook something. But I might have. And uh, L is like, I mean, Light is like, if if anybody finds out that um, I can kill outside of heart attacks, it's going to be a problem. Immediately go to the police department, talking to um, talking to the receptionist. He hears overhears Ray Penner, baby mom. She's like, I gotta give, I gotta give the task force some information. Gotta give the task force some information. And Light pulls her aside, starts conversing with her, and he finds out that this woman is on to him. She's like, Oh, let me tell you what. All right, I think he can kill outside of a heart attack because I told my baby father this, but he told me to go make a chicken sandwich, and I, he don't respect me. And I'm like, I bet, but I don't think I'm wrong. And lo and behold, she's on to him and she ain't even police. She domesticated or Ray wanted her to be domesticated. And now he, I believe she gave him his full name, gave him her full name. So you would, one would only hope, one would only think that he finna kill her. Which is like, dang. Okay, the death note is 60 pages with 38 lines per page. How you know that, Mike Harris? What episode that was on? And here's the craziest thing a, a light going to say. Dang, I, there's a God on my side that ain't even got a death. She just walked into my lap. I said, that's, no, don't, mm -mm, don't bring God into this. This is the devil helping you. This is all devil. God is not dealing with none of this stuff. So anyway. I'm ready for Kev to try to explain JJK domain expansion. What? <laughs> I don't even know. I, I'm, I'm assuming JJK stands for Jujutsu Kaisen. Jujutsu Kaisen. But domain expansion? That's the prayer of j -Bez. I pray for increase. All right. This was fun. Unfortunately, I got to go pick up my son from school. I enjoyed this time with y'all, my anime peeps. We are small in number, but we are big in heart. God bless you. God keep you. We will see you at the conference.